Happy Tech Tuesday on Wednesday. Um, Florida's opening up a lot of rinks, so in I was really busy yesterday doing sharpenings and getting kids back to going on the ice, which brought me to a good idea that I probably wasn't actually going to do on Tuesday, but I thought would be really great to do. It's So you've got either ice or roller, you've been doing a different mounting with a different uh, setup. How do you plug holes to get back to the mounting or to uh, do a new mounting? So we're going to take off this blade real quick and we're going to plug these holes together. Uh, as you can see, this is a leather sole. Now, if you do have a DEA, they do have these carbon fiber plugs. It's going to be a lot of similar process to what we have. I actually pulled one out here. You see, it's a little, it's kind of like that same. You've seen in some of the other videos I have about the soles being like a plastic material or a nylon material. You see the shine off it there. Um, they're about the thickness of the inner sole where you're actually putting in the screw. So if you, you're gonna do similar stuff that I'm gonna show you for the leather, uh, but you'd wanna use uh, carbon fiber uh, to give you a nice solid, you know, usually if you're pre-drilling the same hole, it should fit, no problem. Uh, if you've used a smaller one, you may have to pre-drill it a little bigger to get it to fit. Um, and as you can see on the diagram, you know, and actually it's, it mentions adhesive. Um, so you would, do some of the same epoxy glue I'm talking about, but before you did, I'd want to make sure that it fit down in the hole, and then you slide it down. So uh, you can get these from um, your Adaya retailer, I believe, or they should have some if they're doing it. So I'm gonna put this back in here. All right, so same principle though, Adaya or leather skates. I'll try to face it toward you. Actually, see how there's that that lifted area right here. First thing you want to do is get rid of that. Now, sandpaper really is helpful with that. You can use files as well. And with sandpaper, 120, you can see it's kind of bumpy. If you have a 50, the smaller the number, the bigger the bumps. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly, with my most coarse paper, see I folded it in half, gives me a nice hard edge. And I can basically just, just hit the part of the sole that I want. And so you can see I'm already getting slightly less bumpy right there. So. Get the other one. I mean, and compared, if you hit a little bit of the sole, it won't be a big deal. You can always go to a less grit sandpaper if you're worried about making hard lines on it. Just give light pressure with your finger over top of it. See that? Pretty darn smooth. Look at that. Took away that large bump. All right, so I like to wear a glove because I do enough of these I don't like peeling uh, paint off my, uh, my hands. Now for a leather sole, I find raw leather, you know, if you can get it in sheets, works really good. Another item that I find extremely good is if you go and get a leather shoelace, usually at uh, CVS, they already have them, and look, they're almost predisposed to be the right uh, shape to fit in there. So I'm just gonna cut one off. And um, to get it in the hole, I often find if you take it longwise between your fingers, you can cut, see how I'm being safe, I'm on either side, that I can cut it longwise as I'm cutting through, and then I get this nice, it's kind of like a, a coffer nail almost, almost like a shim. And that allows me when I come on over here with my, my leather shoelace, is to spin it in and make sure it fits. And so you can see, now I've got this part. And, and just like you saw in the Adeo one, you fill it in the hole and then you snip it to fit. Because you obviously want to be uh, flush and level. So that's one way you can. Um, another device that people might have if you have um, a you know, pretty well tool shop, a lot of times, I actually use this a lot to put in uh, extra holes in my belt if I've had a long weekend. But you can uh, punch on these and that's where this raw leather comes in. You get a thick piece and then you come up here in that thick part. And you're gonna have to use your hands. Ta-da! And then, it's kind of like those Adeo ones, but a little smaller. See how they're just little uh, round pegs of leather. And so the same thing, you can fit it in these holes. I'm gonna half put this one in. 
This is where a, a rubber mallet will come in handy. So you can see how now it fits just right on top of there and then you can pound it in. Um, now this is about the adhesive part now. So you can use a stronger two-ton epoxy, but it takes usually about 45 minutes to set and overnight. I oftentimes find five-minute epoxy is the best. And so if you've seen other videos, you know how it goes. You take out the two-part, squish a little. Uh, you don't really need that much. I'm talking just a dab. Because remember, you're basically just adhering the sides of this. I'm going to get up nice and close. Got my parts in there, too. So you have just two little dabs. And so now, set this down for better action here. I like to use uh, the drywall screws because I got the threads on it, really get the stuff moving together. And take at least 15 to 20 seconds to really try to, to go around. And, and I do a swirl pattern and then I'll use a zigzag and that's to mess it up and get it really connected. Zigzag side to side, up, down. Helps keep my glue in the center as well. Because when I do this, it kind of spreads out. But if you zigzag, you, tend, you can kind of push it into the center. All right. So now we've got them level. Now we've got our material we're going to put in. We'll, we'll use both kinds. We'll use my leather pegs and we'll use this. Um, I always like to pre-do the hole and so I get a little dab on the top of it. Use my screw. And put some in there. Reload. So now I've got just a little bit down in the hole there. I got some on there. Now this is the delicate part. It's always the fun. And sometimes it works um, to use a pair of pliers if your fingers or if it's really small. Because like you can see, I can get it on the end of that. And then I can a little bit on the end, push it in there. I'm going to use, now I'm going to take the top and push it on my head like it's my mini finger, push it down in there. You'll see how much I got, I got it really kind of set in there. If it slips down enough or you want to put into because you got much, you can also use your nail. That's a good one to set on top of it. I like the rubber mallet whenever I'm doing these, gives a little softer hit. Oops, that one fell right in, perfect. You can see it fell right in there. So now I'm gonna go do it again with another one. You just don't wanna sit in there. No. There we go. Sometimes you gotta kinda coax it, so patience. If you, if you want a little more time and flexibility, definitely use a, a longer epoxy, like 40 minutes. You see, now I got a second one in there just over top of it. I'm going to push him down just a little harder. Now I'm going to cap it with a thicker one to really give it a good set. And now I'm going to probably have to do a little pounding. I need a little bit more uh, backside friction, so I'm going to put the toe cap down here on the side. That was actually too big. I'll have to get another piece of little leather because that one, I got it too big on that one. That happens sometimes, and you just got to kind of roll with it. Oh, there we go. Built another one, came through. Set it in there. I took three little pieces. You saw they weren't as long as those Adeo ones, so I had to put three in there. See, now I got it nice and flush, and there's a piece of leather in there with the epoxy. Now I'm going to use my shoelace one on, on the second hole. So I'm getting a little nervous here. This is getting close to two and a half minutes. My glue is getting a little harder, which is actually kind of perfect for these ones because they're a little softer, and I tend to use a screw technique. So I've, I've put all the glue on it. See, it's getting a little harder. And I tend to do a twist. I put it in and then I twist it in to get it deeper in. Now with these ones, I tend to, because I don't know the final length of how much I can actually get it 
kind of pushed in there. So I'll oftentimes just let it set up like this. And then I go back with my handy dandy knife about an hour from now, or probably, I'd probably give it a little bit longer than that. You know, an hour it'll be set up firm. But then I'll cut it across and then sand it again. And I like this because it really, you know, I can keep my hands on it and push it in. These are really good ones for like a finishing one. If you have all those tools, those are the ideal way. As you can see, it's going to be less work later. But uh, this one, I'll come along later and I'll just show you right here right now. I'm just delicately cutting at the, what I've pushed in there with my sharp knife. And you can see that's what it'll look like later when I do it. And since it's still you know drying right now, I can do it where I take my mallet. If you don't like messing up your mallet, you can always put like a paper on it. Just give it a few pops. Because I'm wearing my glove, I can use my hands, push over top of it. And so see, I got two plugged holes. It's a full level space there. See that? One trick I also do because I don't like getting my hands all dirty is Whatever the dot is that I left it in, I actually leave the screw in it. And you can see it's it's really getting hard now. And so that only took a couple minutes, actually just the time of this video, um, to really do that. Use the back of my glove and just put some touch and feel on it. But you know, now I let that set for 24 hours and then I'm ready to mount level flush and however I want to go at it, you know. All right, well, that's Tech Tuesday. So as you guys are transitioning from roller back to ice, uh, don't forget to uh, make sure that you got a nice level space and where to put on your uh, your blades again. And, and I hope you guys have been staying safe and I've been thinking about all you. So take care.